Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about the solubility rules. So the solubility rules are just a set of rules that govern the solubility of ionic compounds in water. So remember, solubility refers to how well a solute dissolves in a solvent to make a solution. So remember, the solute would be like these little blue particles over here. The solute is the minority component, the stuff that actually gets dissolved. And then the solvent is the majority component, which is shown here in pink. The solvent is the stuff that actually does the dissolving. So the solubility, according to the solubility rules, the solutes are ionic compounds, and the solvent is always going to be water. So the solubility rules tell you whether or not something is what we call soluble or insoluble. If something is considered soluble, that means that it dissolves in water. So this is a glass of, uh, of aqueous uh, sodium chloride. So it's a, a sodium chloride that has been dissolved in water. And so since sodium chloride dissolves in water, we consider sodium chloride to be soluble. This compound over here, though, does not dissolve in water. In fact, this was uh, something called a precipitation reaction in which one of the products immediately solidifies within the solution and comes out of it. It's called a precipitation reaction, and we are going to discuss that a little bit more uh, in a little bit more detail later on. But again, something is considered soluble if it dissolves in water and insoluble if it doesn't. Now, this classification of soluble and insoluble is fairly useful, but it sort of gives us uh, the wrong idea about solubility. Solubility isn't so black and white. I mean, we talk about soluble and insoluble like we have a, you know, a fine line between the two, but we really don't. Instead, solubility is actually what we call a continuum. So it's this sort of continuous spectrum of solubility, and soluble and insoluble are just two extremes within that continuum. Even compounds that are considered insoluble, they still do dissolve to some extent. And there's usually a third category that we call slightly soluble. And we'll see a little bit more on that a little later. So without further ado, let's actually go into uh, the solubility rules and look at them one by one. So the first table over here has to do with uh, compounds uh, that are generally considered uh, soluble, ionic compounds that are generally considered soluble. So the first rule has to do with lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion and ammonium ion. If the ion, or excuse me, if the ionic compound contains any of these four cations, it will always be soluble and there are no exceptions. The next rule has to do with nitrates and acetates. So if it has nitrate ion or acetate ion, it's the same with the alkali metals and ammonium. It will always be soluble and there are no exceptions. The next rule is a little bit more complicated. It has to do with uh, ionic compounds containing chloride ion, bromide ion, and iodide ion. These are generally soluble, but there are a couple of, sec of, uh, of exceptions. For instance, when uh, if you have a chloride, bromide, or iodine, iodide that is paired up with silver ion, the uh, mercury uh, 2, 2 plus ion, or the lead 2 ion, all of these uh, types of compounds are an exception, and they are uh, insoluble in water. But otherwise, the chlorides, bromides, and iodide salts are going to be soluble in water. Then there's the sulfate ion, the SO42 minus. So sulfates are generally soluble, but there are five exceptions, and those exceptions are when sulfate pairs up with strontium ion, barium ion, uh, the lead 2 ion, silver ion, and the calcium. And all five of those sulfates are considered insoluble in water. So those are the rules uh, governing uh, ions that are found in compounds that are generally soluble with a few exceptions. Now let's talk about rules associated with compounds that are generally insoluble. If your compound is a hydroxide or a sulfide of some sort, uh, generally those compounds are going to be uh, insoluble. However, there are a couple of uh, exceptions. For instance, if the hydroxide or sulfide ion is paired up with lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, or ammonium ion, then they will be soluble. Uh, if the sulfide ion in particular pairs up with calcium ion, strontium ion, or barium ion, so if you have calcium sulfate, strontium sulfate, or barium sulfate, those are also an exception. Those are going to be soluble. Also, if, you, if the hydroxide ion pairs up with calcium, strontium, or barium ions, then those compounds are going to be slightly soluble. So again, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide 
are all slightly soluble. So the sort of the in-betweeners, they're not quite insoluble, they're not quite soluble. Remember that solubility is a continuum, it's not a black or white sort of situation. And then the final rule for solubility has to do with carbonates and phosphates. Carbonates and phosphates are generally insoluble and the only exception is when car uh, carbonate ion or phosphate ion pairs up with lithium ion, sodium ion, potassium ion, or ammonium ion, in which case uh, those carbonates and phosphates would be soluble. So the solubility rules really aren't that hard to understand. Um, if your teacher has a heart, uh, you'll be provided with these on a test. Um, but even if you're not provided with them, they're really not too hard to memorize. So let's go through a couple of examples and try to see if a few compounds are soluble or insoluble. So the first one is sodium chloride, NaCl. Is this soluble or is this insoluble? Well, the first thing that's jumping out at me is that you have sodium ion, and if we look at that very first rule, I'll go back to the previous slide for a second. If we go back to that first rule, it says that any compound containing sodium ion is going to be soluble with no exceptions. And so that's really all the further we need to go with this example. So we know that sodium chloride is going to be soluble in water. Next example is calcium nitrate. Uh, if we look at the second rule in our solubility rules table, let's go back a second. Second rule, it says that when the compound contains the nitrate ion, it is going to be soluble with no exceptions. So therefore, calcium nitrate, no exception, it's also going to be soluble in water. Let's go on to another example, that would be barium sulfate. So the rule for sulfates is the, let's go back to the uh, table real quick. Sulfates, that's the uh, fourth rule down on, the, uh, on that top table there. It says that sulfates are generally soluble, but if you look closely, barium sulfate is one of the exceptions. So barium sulfate is actually going to be insoluble in water. Sulfates are generally soluble, but barium sulfate is an exception and it is insoluble in water. Uh, this one here, this is copper 2 chloride. So we need to refer to the, sol the solubility rule that has to do with chloride salts. So let's go back to that. So it says that chlorides, bromides, and iodides are uh, generally soluble, and there are a couple of exceptions, but copper is not one of them. The only exceptions are silver, mercury, and lead, and so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't satisfy the exception. So therefore, copper 2 chloride is going to be soluble in water. And I have one more example for you. That is this one right here. This is potassium carbonate. So if we refer to the solubility rule for carbonates, going back to that table once more, all the way down there below, it says that carbonates and phosphates are generally insoluble. However, when carbonates or phosphates pair up with lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium, they are soluble. So potassium carbonate would then be an exception to that rule, and therefore potassium carbonate is soluble in water. So again, you just look at the ions that are in the formula, you try to refer to the solubility rules to see if there's any rule that has to do with those ions, and then you also look at the exceptions to the rule to see if uh, there are any exceptions with the compound that you're trying to determine the solubility of. So again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I like to use the rules as a tool. Um, when I uh, assign work for my students, when I assign tests, I generally don't uh, require that they memorize the solubility rules um, because it's just like the periodic table. I don't expect you to memorize it, but I do expect you to be able to use it as a tool. Um, not everybody has the same sort of teaching philosophy. Um, your professor or teacher might require you to memorize it, but even then, it's really not that hard to memorize. If you just uh, you know, keep practicing, eventually you'll know the solubility rules like the back of your hand. All right, so that is it. I hope this video was helpful to you, and uh, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, and have a good one.